Hey guys, Anthony Piacivona here, founder of AP Growth. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the update, where I see the market going, what's happening with Tesla stock as they were down to the 930s, looking to fill the gap around the low 910. And I have to give you an outlook of where I see Tesla stock as well as the overall market in terms of growth stocks moving in the near term and just show how I'm personally positioning myself for the next few weeks. If you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market with options trading, day trading, or swing trading, you're definitely going to want to subscribe. Hit that thumbs up button at the end if you appreciate it. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. Look at that, we're finally starting to see some buying with Tesla stock now. We are trading around the low 930s for most of the day. It's 2 p.m. So we're nearing market close and this is basically the kind of pattern I have drawn out. There is a gap here with Tesla stock dating back to about the end of October and the gap is from 910 to 940. We filled a bit of that gap today and then got bought up to the 940s and the gap does start at about 947. So we're currently in the gap and the assumption is that we're gonna be filling that gap. So 91% of all gaps ever created get filled. And this is why there's a lot of traders buying puts. They've been buying puts on Tesla, honestly, and shorting Tesla until you get down to about 9.10. And then everyone is expecting a huge balance at 9.10. I still think we're likely to see some more selling pressure. I'm kind of in that same camp. I think we could bottom around 900. We're transitioning towards rates increasing. We're transitioning towards growth stocks getting hit. We're transitioning towards lower PEs for high growth names. So it's normal that this is all happening when you combine this with Elon still having about 30% more shares to sell. He sold another uh, 934,000 shares yesterday, Monday, but he still has about, about $6 billion worth of Tesla stock to sell according to his 10% plan. So what I think is we could fill the gap around the low 900s and then have the balance back up and kind of trade between 1,000 and 940, call it for the next two weeks until we get to end of December and we could possibly break out of the 1000 at the end of December because of the delivery number coming out about January 3rd or which I think is honestly more reasonable is I think we could trade more sideways between 940 and 1000 all the way until the end of January and earnings be the thing that pushes us out of this descending triangle breaking us back towards all time highs into February. So here is what my account currently looks like. I sold 60 contracts of the 200 strike call on Apple stock because I don't believe Apple is gonna go above 200 by the end of the year. And I collected about $2,700 on that. We're on the daily chart here. And we I actually set these yesterday when Apple got to 182 and then we had a huge rejection. So that worked out perfect so far. So a lot of premiums have already been eaten up. Apple is a $3 trillion company when the stock is at about 185 or so. I don't believe that we're gonna break that $200 level by the end of the year. So that's why I sold the calls there. The RSI and the stochastic is still looking really good. It's still, it's looking like we are kind of topping, but honestly with these kind of indicators, you can still see a, a push up. It's not like we've totally topped here. We're not seeing lower highs on RSI. We're still kind of seeing higher higher lows on RSI. So it's trending up. We're seeing the stochastic turning and heading down, but it can turn head down and then turn back up like we did back here at the beginning of December. Here more on the MACD, we, it, looks, it does look like we're topping, but I'm just more based on this fact that Apple's had a huge run from the middle of November, going from 150 to 182 in a month. So. I just don't see us continuing that strength within the next two weeks to go all the way past 200. And that's my justification for the trade there. The next trade is a short strangle on Lucid expiring at the end of the year, December 31st. It is the 30 strike put and the 55 strike call. No explanation really needed there. The next one is on Rivian, 90 strike put and 155 strike call. I don't believe we're gonna break those ranges. So we'll talk about Rivian real quick. The implied volatility on Rivian and Lucid is so good. So I have to be milking the trades on this, but obviously when the volatility is so high, you're at a risk of these going in the money and you're taking a huge loss. So that's why I'm using a wide range here. Um, the put here is, is 90 strike. So we're all the way down here. And then the call is about 155. And you know we have a lot of levels to break through on the way back up. You know 140. It's it's unlikely to really break through 140 in the near term. So I'm confident about the call side. The put side, I am not confident with. We could definitely see a dump down to 90 and below. I'm not trying to alarm anyone who's in the stock currently for a long-term hold. I'm just saying, you know, if these high PE names 
that aren't very profitable continue to get whacked, which I think they will, then Rivian is one of those that has a really high valuation with no income, no revenue, and no profitability. So because of that, it is highly likely to get hit harder if other ones like Tesla continue to get hit harder. Tesla stock won't get hit as hard as we see the growth names getting hit because they have revenue now. Because the, the main concern is when interest rates go up, then the tech stocks get hit even harder because the cost of capital is increasing. Tesla is a company where they don't need more capital because they are already profitable and they can use that money to fund future ventures. So because of that, they shouldn't get hit as hard. But Tesla is also valued based on future earnings. So because of that, they still get hit hard. However, names like Rivian and others that have no current earnings, they are purely based off of future earnings and they should get hit even harder than the names like Tesla. Next trade I have here is on a firm. I have the 85 strike put and 135 strike strangle. 40 contracts here uh, expire in December 31st and I collected about $9,000 for this trade. And that's, that's how much we have left, 9,000 left in premium. So if we pull up a firm, we'll see that it has been dumping hard. We're now up, down to 105 and my strike is at about 85 down here. I actually have some other puts at the 90 strike. So that's why I have a line here. And then the call is at 135. So it's a relatively tight range based on how volatile a firm has been lately. We have this gap here from 75 to 88. So we could be going towards this gap in the near term if we continue to see the sell-off happening. You know, we have the Fed meeting tomorrow, but if the Fed comes out and says, you know, we're gonna end this taper in like a month and we're gonna raise rates in a few months, then we could see a huge temper tantrum and continue sell-off. I honestly expect a continuation of sell-off in all these names. So that's why I've been heavy in cash, but I still have the far majority of my net worth fully invested. So I'm taking huge hits. Don't, don't think that I'm like fully in cash. I believe having most of my money always in, invested and then using the cash to trade, to continue to earn money, to buy more shares as we are down at these levels. That's kind of my whole thought process. Next trade is on Qualcomm. I really liked how Qualcomm's been trading. So I sold 40 contracts, 160 put and 205 strike call expiring at the end of the year, December 31st. So all these trades are expiring December 31st and we collected about $5,500 for this one. And this one was put on yesterday. So most of these trades were put on yesterday or the end of last week. If we pull up call, Qualcomm, we're gonna see that we have this huge gap here from 140 to 154. So we still have a lot of strength. We do have a downtrend in RSI on the daily chart. So the question is, do we have a huge dump all the way down to that gap in the near term? I don't think it's gonna be that quick. I think it's gonna take a lot longer to fill that gap. But uh, I do see us topping. I don't see us pushing towards 200, definitely not. Can we pull all the way down to 160? Yes, definitely in the next two weeks, it's possible. I think that if you're looking to dollar cost average in, I think now is the first day you could potentially buy some things or you could wait tomorrow and see if we get a bounce. Today or tomorrow are honestly good days to start uh, dollar cost averaging, but there could be a, a lot more red coming in the next one to two weeks. Let's put it that way. Another trade is on Roblox, the 85, 80 strike bull put. This means that I sold the 85 strike put and I bought the 80 strike call. What this does is this maxes out my potential loss. So it caps it out. So most of my trades you've been seeing, they are short strangles, which means that there's no capped loss, which means that if it's not managed, you take a massive loss and you can blow up your entire account. Whereas when you do a trade like this, you cap your loss because I'm selling the 85 strike put and I'm buying an 80 strike put that is farther away so it costs less money so i'm still making money but i'm capping the loss so i don't lose a ton of money if roblox drops below 80. the thought process there is you don't lose as much money if it goes far through your strikes but you won't make as much money because you have to pay for the 80 strike put Here's Roblox, there's a gap from 80 up to about 93. So we could see the gap fill coming in the near future, coming one, two weeks, and my strike is at about 85. So basically what I'm, what I'm hoping and assuming is that we might fill partial gap and then bounce, or we will fill the gap sooner than later and bounce back up and not have to take the loss of Roblox dropping below 80. On the indicators, it's very weak. RSI going down, very weak. Stochastic going down here, very weak. Um, 
However, when percent R does drop all the way to the bottom here, there is a short-term bounce, but you can have a short-term bounce and then a continuation of a dump. So all this means is like tomorrow, we could see Roblox be 108, get a little bounce, percent R come up, and then the next day, say Thursday, Friday, big dump below 100. We're still seeing uh, some some buying here. It looks like, look, Tesla 9, 945 now, it's starting to come back up. Roblox is coming up, Nvidia coming up to 281. So it does look like we are seeing a bounce, but the question is, does this last? I did buy a call, uh, March 18th expiration, short term, only a few months, a 950 call, because I do think that we can get a push up to 1,000 by the end of the year. And just that push up to 1,000 by the end of the year will put me profitable on this trade. So I just bought one contract, it's only 12,000 US. The next trade is on PayPal. I'm selling 10 contracts, 170 strike put and 220 strike call and I collected about 1,700 US for that one. Again, expired at the end of the year. So let's pull up PayPal on the chart. It's been massively oversold. So this is what you're seeing. PayPal topping out about 310 a few months back and just savage downtrend. If you take a look at how far we're down from July, it's about, uh, we went as low as 42% from July. And I personally think that we are bottoming here. I think we could trade sideways or we're at least due for a significant bounce back up to 200. And I don't see us continuing continuing down below 170. So we'd have to go down another 10% from here in the next two weeks. That would put us almost 50% down from highs. You know, I'm banking on us getting a bit of a bounce. You know, we're starting to see RSI come up. The question is, are we gonna start seeing uh, an upward trending RSI? I personally think so, but we don't know. But that's just where I'm personally thinking that PayPal is gonna trade. I don't see us really breaking below that 170 level in the next two weeks. NVIDIA, I sold a 240 strike put and a 340 strike call expiring at the end of the year. And I collected $10,000 for that one. So if we go pull up NVIDIA on the chart here, it's currently trading at 280. I put this trade on yesterday when Nvidia was 282 and that's what we're seeing right here. So we had a top at about 340 and we've been selling off. And on the daily chart, it looks like the 50 day is at 273. So far we've held that and we've bounced up a bit, but I think we could still see downtrending a little more sell off. We've had a bottoming on the stochastic, so it's possible that we do get a bounce here and we trade closer to 300 in the next two weeks. But I think that it is likely for us to make lower highs down to the 260, 250 level. We just had such an extreme run on Nvidia, but I really don't see us making new highs like 350 in the next two weeks. That's why I chose the 340 strike and I chose the 240 strike on the downside, which is right where my mouse is right here. I don't think we're gonna go that low in the next two weeks, but you can see there's a gap here. If I really zoom in on the daily chart, there is a gap from 232 to 240. So the question is, is that gap gonna be filled in the next two weeks? Very possible. Again, if everything continues the way it's been continuing, definitely possible to happen but I do think there are, gonna, there are gonna be significant bounces along the next two weeks. Next trade here is on Blink. I put this trade on about last week and it has given me problems. As you can see, my cost base is about 95 cents and it's currently worth $1.45. So we are about uh, $2,000 in the red currently. We're going to see it's currently just below 30. And what I see is a nice bottom here at about 26.50 but my strike is 28. You know, this is this honestly wasn't a good trade. I was getting greedy. I remember when I put this trade on, I didn't like the amount of premium I was collecting for the 26 strike. And this was because Blink was currently trading about $35 per share. So, you know, Blink was at 35 and I didn't like the 26 strike because it was it would have made the trade not really worth it because it wasn't enough premium. So I put this trade on, but based on technicals and based on the chart, I certainly should have chose the $26 strike. This one could end up being a loss, but we're just gonna follow this one closely. I'm gonna follow my rules. The most likely scenario is I'm gonna roll this position if Blink breaks through 27.50 here, and I will roll it to the 26 strike expiring a week later than the current expiration, and that will save most of the loss. So this won't turn out to be a huge loss as long as Blink doesn't go down about 25 or below. A new trade I put on yesterday was a SPY short strangle and expiring at the end of the year, 439 strike put and 490 strike call. I personally don't see us breaking 480 by the end of the year. We could get that Santa Claus rally for some reason at the very last minute and go to new highs. 
I don't really see it happening, but if it does happen, I chose the 490 strike, so that way we don't take a loss on this one. 20 contracts, and I collected about $2,800 for this one, and it's currently worth $4,500. So we're in a loss on this, and this is because the VIX went up and the SPY has sold off today. So if we pull up the SPY on the daily chart, remember our strike is 439, so it's right where my mouse is. It's a long way to go. We have this nice upwards trending line here going back all the way to COVID. And uh, we never hit this line since COVID. So COVID is the only time we broke that line. And I'm, bas I'm basically assuming that we're gonna keep holding that line. And this line now would be around 450. So I think we could drop to 450 and then continue higher. I mean, double bottom around here, just like we did at the end of November. Very possible in the near future. but. It doesn't look like, I really don't think we're going to drop to that 439 level in the next two weeks. And because of that, I think I'm highly likely to keep all the premium on that trade as well. Another one is on a firm. So the 90 strike put and the 155 strike call. Again, the 90 strike put will be in danger and we are in a significant loss on this one. We collected about $5,000 on this one and it's now worth $7,000. So we're currently in about a $2,000 loss and this expires at the end of the year. So if we go ahead and pull up a firm on the daily chart, Again, we see the gap there, so we could break that $90 level and fill the gap in the next two weeks. The question is, do we do it in the next two weeks or does it happen later? Last trade here is on Roblox. It was a 110 strike put and a 130 strike call. I rolled the call down to 115, expiring at the end of this week as Roblox has sold off. And this is a significant loss as well. So we collected originally about $2,500 and it's now worth $6,800. So this could be a $4,000 dollar loss and this loss is all basically happened today because the Roblox broke down to uh, 106 here. So rule of thumb, basically it's below my strike. So if Roblox closes still below, I'm going to roll the position either down to the 100 strike expire next week or I'll close out the position altogether. That's my thought process there. Anytime a position closes the day below my strike, and it gets close to expiration, I either choose to roll it to a further date and a lower strike, or I close up the position altogether. But the good news here on Tesla stock is this is a descending triangle. So as you see, we hit a high here about 1240. We sold off and we went close to the beginning of the gap about at about 950, got bought up, went to this high here at about 1200, rejected, went up again to about 1160, another lower high, rejected, went all the way down to the line, got bought up, didn't make it closer to this line, sold off, broke through this, this line to fill the gap, and then got bought up back to the line at about 940. So the question is, you know, are we gonna hold this 940 or are we gonna fill the gap down to 910? And then if we do fill the gap to 910, then we'd be looking at this uh, descending triangle. So anytime there's a descending triangle, it's more bullish. Anytime there's an ascending triangle, it's more bearish. Previously, we had an ascending triangle at Tesla stock and it broke bullish. So, you know, nothing is gossipal, but based on the indicators, there's no reason why we have any near term strength for Tesla stock. Also, as you can see in the volume profile, there is very little buying from 820 to 940, which means it's very easy for us to fall from 940 through the 900s to the high 880s. Well, there's, there's some volume here at about 850 to 880. So very possibly we fall to 880 and use that or 890 as a true support. I really don't see us falling below the 850 level. I think that we could dip below 900 and then get, then get bought back up. What we could see is, you know, maybe tomorrow we get a bounce and then we go lower and we fill the gap and we get down to about 897 and then we get bought up huge and we start making our way towards about 950s by the end of the year. And then, you know, beginning of January, deliveries come out, that pushes it up to about 1,000, but then we, we see resistance at 1,000, we sell if we chop around January, and then we finally break this descending triangle to the upside because earnings are amazing, they beat expectations. We can see a move of this magnitude. So you basically take the top of the triangle down to the base, you draw a line, and then wherever the stock breaks, you put that line there. So let's say we do go ahead and we break uh, at the end of January here, like J January 28th, well, we put the line there. And then what that means that uh, it could push us up to about uh, 1350 in the month of February. So that's possible. I'm not saying it's 
likely. I would like to see the RSI make higher lows at least. So we're currently just diving down. And when the RSI is making lower lows, theory, typically on Tesla stock, especially when the RSI is making lower lows, it just continues to go lower and lower and lower. If we look back in the past for the stock, uh, if you look back here, look what happened. So the RSI got to about 40 and you might be thinking, oh, it's a good time to buy. No, it got dumped all the way down to about 20. So, you know, the RSI can always go lower. Don't think that, oh, the RSI is low, it's a good time to buy, it can always go lower because you would have bought here thinking that the RSI is low and you made a mistake because it went even lower all the way down and that's what pushed it down to 550. So the good time to buy is when you see the RSI get to about here. So now at least if you bought here when the RSI was about 70, look what happened after. Yeah, it went down a bit. It didn't go down much and it didn't take a long time for it to go higher. But if you buy when the RSI is just low, it could just keep going lower. Here at least it, it truly broke the trend of the downtrending RSI where it got up to 70. So that's a good sign for me. If we watch Tesla on the daily chart, if we see this RSI come back up and get to around the high 60s at least, that's a good time to get back in because we can see another explosion pushing us back to the 1300. So that's gonna conclude the video. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you appreciated it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.